On this week's episode, guys, we are going to step away from the training and behavior part of what we've been talking about and dive deep into some sports that you can be doing with your dog. And we'll go through, we'll talk about some of the most popular ones, why they're fun, and why maybe you should be considering this as an option for you and your dog. Let's get into it. All right, well, let's get into this week's episode. Um, welcome to Learn Laugh Bark. I am your host, Jake, from OnDogTrainingAcademy.com. We are an online course-based website. Check us out, on OnDogTrainingAcademy.com. Hit the subscribe button, and when the courses start to get launched, we will be sending you guys notifications and not bombarding you with too many emails, I absolutely promise you. Um, also... Our Facebook page for Learn, Laugh, Bark is starting to get some traction, and we're starting to get some really good uh, advice, or not advice, but suggestions for topics, and we will be putting some stuff together and hopefully incorporating some of your guys' ideas into future episodes. You can always jump over to the Learn, Laugh, Bark podcast on Facebook. Um, That is our only platform for now, but we might try to change that in the near future. Maybe near future. It's social media, so yeah, you know. Don't want to get too involved, but kind of have to. So, like I mentioned, on this week's episode, we're going to be talking about not so much dog training behavior, although I think everything kind of leads back to to it. But we're going to be talking about some activities that you can be doing with your dog, whether it be at a high competitive level or just a I want to mess around and have fun with my dog level. Although I feel like every, if you're doing any sport with your dog, I feel like it should be fun. And it doesn't matter if you're a high level competitor or just entry, the goal should be having fun with your animal. So without further ado, We're going to be jumping into about 11 or 12, maybe 13, who knows, we'll see how long this gets, Um, types of sports that you can be doing with your dog. We'll talk a little bit about each one, and the ones that I actually have personal experience in, I can actually, I'll give you a little bit more in-depth into it. So the first one, which I think is gaining a ton of steam lately, um, is Barn Hunt. So if you're not familiar with Barn Hunt, uh, Barn Hunt basically rats are placed in in these safety tubes and they're hidden in a maze created with bales of hay. Dogs sniff their way through mazes searching for the rats. Um, When they locate the rat, they alert and uh, the handler yells out rat or something like that and and it's it's found. Now you, you might think, well, you know, this sounds fun, but my dog won't do it. You would be so surprised at how many dogs find it absolutely fascinating to interact with a rat and find the rat. So I've seen people with Cavaliers doing it. I've seen people with obviously a lot of Terriers doing it. Um, I've seen a lot of Hound Dogs doing it. Really, if your dog has that little critter getter in their brain, then a barn hunt might be something that could interest you, might interest you, or more, more or less might interest your dog. So definitely something to look into. It's um, the training is is low to moderate. I think um, the requirements for the dog. It's not a huge area they have to search. So I feel like even if your dog's a little bit older, um, this is definitely something you can do with them. And the the physical requirements for you, which we always have to keep in consideration, is low. You know, you're letting the dog go in there and you're working with them. And like I said, it's a small area. I don't know the dimensions. I have not participated in Barn Hunt, but I have observed it and find it absolutely fascinating. I just do too many things with my dog already to pick up another hobby. So we're going to jump into the next one. The next one is a huge, huge sport in the dog community, and that's agility. And agility has expanded into so many different areas. You know, if you're looking at competition stuff, You've got your your weaves. You've got your courses. I mean, I there's a bunch of different organizations that are offering agility titles. Um, there's a lot of training facilities that are offering entry level or old dog, um, or maybe not just physically gifted dog agility classes. Low impact is what they're a lot of times called. Dogs love this. They love going through the tunnels 
walking over the A-frames, interacting with you, jumping through the, the hurdles. And what I really like about a lot of these sports that we're doing, like the barn hunt, but then agility, of course, as well, is this is a mostly positive thing. Like, correcting is kind of faux pas. It's not something that people want you to do in agility. You want to keep the dog happy, energetic, and wanting to run and do all this stuff. And I find, even if it's something you're doing as just a fun hobby, like we did this, we did a couple courses with our, our Malinois, and he absolutely, of course, loved it um, and did really well with it. But also, we played around with it with our Basset Hound that we used to have. And um, even when he was older, he just loved it. He loved interacting on equipment and had a really good time. Now, the training can be moderate to extreme. I think it really depends on what level you're wanting to go at. In my opinion, even with if you have a puppy, getting into like these agility, intro agility classes, even if you have no desire to do more agility, is so cool because you're, you're introducing your dog to a lot of different... Uh, um, socialization things, so much environment, so much textile stuff where they're, 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 they're wobble boards, there's jumps, there's tunnels, there's all these things your dog's exposed to. Um, the physical requirement for, for requirements for your dog varies again. If you're getting into like a low impact course where you're just taking a class through a training place just to have some fun, it's low. But if you're going high level, yeah, you, you want to make sure your dog's in really good shape if you want to do high level just because just like athletes, pulled muscles, things like that happen. Um, so you want to keep them in good shape. And then obviously, same same goes for people, you know. Uh, in order to be high level, I think there has to be a element of fitness to yourself, or at least endurance, um, you know, because pulled muscles, injuries happen at the high levels for for people as well. So it really depends on, on what you want to do, but agility is huge, and it's it's, I don't think it ever stops growing. It just is insane. Another one, and I guess I'm going to say this about a lot of different things because I feel like people are getting into dog sports a ton. Another one that's really big right now is nose work. So AKC, UKC, uh, NACSW, that's right, uh, all came out with, uh, you know, nose work titles and things. Now, nose work, in my opinion, if you're not familiar with nose work, basically the dogs are trained to indicate on specific scents. There's, uh, I did, I did, um, my dog has a nose work title through NACSW, the uh, National Association of Canine Scent Work, um, but there's also the USCSS, the United States Canine Scent Sports, um, like I said, AKC, UKC, all that have different types of, of it. But basically, they're, they're, what I've done is they're trained to look for certain, certain odors and locate where they are. There's traps set out, you know, maybe there's a, a, a box with treats in it, the the scent's hidden up under stuff and around things, and maybe even in the ground, depending on, you know, where you're doing your stuff through, but the nose work thing to me is super fascinating, and, and what I really enjoy about nose work is, I mean, everybody knows your dogs have awesome sense of smell, that's obvious, you're tapping into that, and, and I think any dog can basically do this, I've seen just a variety of breeds working through nose work. And I think it's absolutely awesome. Um, again, this is something I've had experience in through titling my own dog. And I think it's a blast. Now here's a barn hunting, I think can be like this as well. Um, but this is what I really like about nose work. It's a one dog course. That's it. Agility. It is a one dog thing, but I feel like there's so much high arousal and you could maybe even see that with barn hunt. There's so much high arousal in the environment that if your dog is reactive, it might not be something that's for them. But with nose work, it's you, your dog, a judge, maybe a camera person, maybe another person, whatever. But there's not a lot of people, and it's, there's no other dogs around, especially through the NACSW, which I went through. Again, this is the only one I have direct experience with. I thought it was awesome. Like You're in there with your dog. So if your dog has issues with people, typically this isn't a terrible place because there's not a lot of people. And they don't do anything. They just sit there and they tell you what time, how much time you have left. Um, and and then same thing if your dog's reactive to other dogs. Like you're waiting in these little portal areas kind of going up. You sit in your car and wait and then you get up to the to like the on-deck circle or whatever you want to call that and you wait. But you're like out, well outside of the area. So it's really good for dogs who maybe aren't great with um, other dogs or people. The training is moderate to high. I think... Training the entry level, training the orders, in my opinion, isn't too, too difficult. It's it's seeking out challenges, so taking them to parks, taking them to buildings, doing that type of stuff for training, 
That to me is the tough part. You could do it in your home, and I've played with my dog a ton in my home, and it's it's a blast. Watching him use his nose and work and then teaching him an indicator, I think it's just awesome. Uh, physical requirement for the dog is super low, so that's always nice. And then um, the human physical requirements, I think, are, are low as well. You don't have to do a whole lot. You just kind of let your dog work and follow him around. Another sport now is dock diving. This one, again, is growing more and more um we're seeing more and more places popping up that have pools that are having dogs doing the dock diving and dock diving has a handful of different um we'll be right back hello this is panic and this is sarah and And you are are listening listening to music Music Elixir. elixir A podcast between two friends discussing their favorite Asian artists and music. Uh, tests, I should say. You have your speed test, how fast can you go out and get the thing. You have your height test and you have your distance test. Um, and there's probably more. Again, this is one I don't have a lot of experience with just because my dog... Um, isn't a huge fan of water he'll go in it but to jump off a dock and like splash into it not a huge fan which is too bad because his jumping ability is phenomenal but is what it is but dock diving exactly what it sounds like dog gets up gets up on this manufactured dock it's off that's elevated up above the pool a little bit and they jump into the water and like, this is this one's i think really cool dogs who love swimming tend to just absolutely love this uh, the training is low to moderate because you know you're teaching as long as you can teach your dog to swim. Typically, a good trainer is going to get your dog to jump into the water and start to learn the value of that. Um, physical requirements for the dog moderate to high, I guess you could say, just because. I mean, you could say it's low, but there is some issue with old dogs jumping and the impact of the water. Swimming is great for dogs. The impact of the water for old dogs maybe isn't the greatest, so I would say physical requirements, making sure your dog is healthy and able, um, is, is moderate to, to high. Um, he, the physical requirements for humans, be excited. I think, I think it's low, but just all you have to do is be excited, hype your dog up, be willing to jump in the pool maybe with your dog, and, um, and yeah, but I think dogs have an absolute blast with this. Uh, the next one, this one's been around forever, literally ever it is obedience now obedience can be separated into a couple different things obviously akc ukc asca um, there's a lot of different organizations that offer obedience titles on your dog or for your dog um there's rally there's 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 all sorts of different things but it's basically obedience trials now this is something i do have experience with and i do think it's fun is it as fun potentially as like dike dock diving nose work barn hunt I don't, I mean, some people could disagree and say it totally is. I don't think it is necessarily because there's so much action in those other sports where obedience is you're kind of just going through, I don't want to say going through the motions and make it sound bad. I love doing obedience, by the way. This is something I have experience in. I have titled my dog, a couple of my dogs, my wife has titled some of our dogs in these in, in these different uh, obedience sports. It's fun. It takes more training when it comes to precision point deductions things like that so you definitely need to be careful um with how you're training but i think it's a blast like i'm an obedience trainer so training obedience in this stuff is really fun for me um you know you run through courses you run through specific things you have to do you get take points get taken for crooked sits and, and different things like that whatever um this does involve being around a lot of other people and around a lot of dogs so you want to make sure your dog is dog tolerant, people tolerant at the very least. Um, physical requirements for your dog is definitely just a moderate. Uh, you're basically walking around a course doing specific things. They do have jumps in a lot of the obedience uh, trials, but for the most part, yeah, it's, it's the jumps are so low key, it, it's not too difficult. And it's based off your dog's height, so that's not too bad. Uh, training is moderate to extreme because, like I said, if you want to do well... Um, you need to train precision somewhat because you can get deductions here and there for crooked sits, uh, 
being wide and healing, whatever. So yeah, there's there's a moderate to an extreme, I guess, training with it. And then physical requirement for the human, I would say moderate, but I'd almost say low end too. As long as you can walk, typically you can do these type of things. You can do this type of stuff with your dog. Uh, the next one is lure coursing. So if you're not familiar with lure coursing, get familiar with lure coursing because I am seeing more and more people getting into this, loving this. And lure coursing is a, it's a fun sport. A, a dog chases a lure. Usually it's like a white plastic bag or something um, pulled by a wire on a pulley. And the lure moves fast through the course, uh, set on a flat open field. And then the dog's fastest time chasing the lure through the course wins. So it's a speed test, basically. And I think I've never done this personally. AKC and UKC offer this. Uh, I haven't done it personally, but I imagine it's broken into, like, size of dogs and stuff. So, you know, your your basset hound's not going to be, you know, running against a, a greyhound or something like that. Dogs absolutely love this. They love to chase the thing. I mean, think about, think about when you're playing toys. You're playing fetch. You're playing whatever. Dogs love chasing this stuff. It's awesome. Absolutely awesome. And so watching the dogs interact with this and, and get really jacked up and excited, I think this is fun. This is really fun. Um, <clears throat> the training is low. This is the great thing about this. If you can, if your dog wants to catch the thing, training is low. You're just like, hey, dog, see that thing? Go get that thing. And then the thing moves. So the dog wants to get it even more. The physical requirements for a dog, moderate to extreme. There's a lot of running involved. So if your dog is obese or has joint issues or there's some pain associated with their movement – or if they're super old and potentially arthritic, I don't think this is something I would do with the dog. Um, but and especially because it is a speed test. But you know, it's definitely something you can consult uh, a professional who does this and ask them what you think. A human requirement is low. You're not doing a whole lot once you set your dog and send them. I don't really think you're doing a whole lot with that. Um, so yeah. Now, one sport that I think, and someone will argue with me on this, I'm sure. I, I feel like it's starting to lose. A little bit of traction, um, but it's still a very interesting sport. It's not one that I ever got into, but it's definitely interesting, and it's called fly ball. So uh, it's it's definitely like a, a very barky sport, which is probably why I didn't get into it too much because I'm kind of like the the bark Nazi. I'm not a huge fan of dogs just bark, 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 getting jacked up to the point where they have to vocalize. Being a, an obedience person, control is kind of my thing. Um, a loud, it's definitely like a loud sport. Uh, fly ball involves two teams. They're usually racing. They are racing against each other. They're going down through this like line of hurdles. And then once they get to this box, the dog has to slam on the box. The ball shoots out. They catch the ball, turn around, jump back over the jumps. And then either that's it or the next dog runs. As the one dog clears the line, the next dog goes. And it's a timed race event. Um, like I said, it's extremely, uh, noisy dogs are encouraged to get jacked up which is fine but encouraged to get jacked up encouraged to be excited and be sent down run as jump as fast as you can through all this get the thing and go um training is moderate to high i would say because you have to teach not only hurdles you then have to teach the dog how to how to and to be confident in hitting the 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 fly ball machine where the ball then comes out and being able to catch the ball midair as it's shooting out and then be able to turn around and go back up those jumps that they just cleared coming down. So it's definitely something that, that's a little bit more challenging. Um, also, you're running alongside of the other dogs and you're passing other dogs. So having a dog that is at least dog tolerant is very, very, very important. Um, human physical uh, requirements is low. Again, you get your dog super jacked up, you send them. And so that's always good for us. We don't have to do a whole lot. Our dog does most of the work, so that's not always a bad thing. A physical requirement for the dog, though, is definitely, I would say it's more extreme. Given the impact of hitting the fly ball machine and everything, there's a lot. So making sure your dog doesn't have joint issues or anything is extremely important. Um, another one that I have some actual some friends, and yes, I do have friends, uh, that are into is disc dog. So disc dog is growing very widely too and you've probably seen this on tv people are throwing the frisbees over their head and doing cartwheels and backflips and dogs are doing cartwheels and backflips and catching the frisbees and they chuck them down and the dog jumps and catches them and all that it and and, and i mean who hasn't seen that that stuff is super impressive um but yes that is a sport and that is a sport offered through uh the united states disc dog um association nationals i'm not really sure um 
what it's called exactly, and I apologize. Um, but there's a lot of different organizations that offer uh, disc dogs. Yeah, it's the USDDN. I had to go to my notes here. There's also the UFO. That's an interesting one. And um, Skyhounds. So there's, and, and oh, the AWI, I guess. I guess there's a ton of them. I'm looking through my list, and there's a ton. Just Google disc dog near me, and you'll probably get some some places that do it. There's a lot of uh, facilities, schools that are offering disc dog as a class. There's also a couple places online that are offering some how-to tutorials on how to do disc dog. Um, and it seems to be really fun. If your dog loves chasing a frisbee and you love fr- throwing frisbees, it's a match made in heaven. You can learn to do a lot of different trick stuff with them. Um, the training is moderate to extreme, I feel, especially if you're going to do any competition stuff. If you're just going to get into, well, if you're going to get into competition, low end competition stuff, it's not super, super bad. Um, but I would definitely say moderate to extreme with the competition because you have to teach your dog how to be precise in catching it. Um, moderate to extreme physical requirements for the dog. And then for the human, actually, it is a moderate to extreme because you're doing a lot of bending. Your throwing has to be precise. Everything has to be right on. So definitely a little bit more of an advanced thing, but you can do it. I have faith. The next one then is Trick Dog. So Trick Dog, this is one thing I love about Trick Dog. And Rally and some of the obedience, well, maybe just Rally. I don't know if the actual obedience stuff through AKC is is this. But what I like about Trick Dog is you can actually do a lot of these right now. Um, once COVID hit, you can actually do a lot of these Trick Dog things online. So you submit videos. Um, you submit paperwork where an evaluator has watched you do stuff. So it's not something that I think is super difficult to uh, obtain. Uh, it's a great option for dogs and owners who can't travel to competitions. Uh, they learn. You just go through. They have a list of like tricks you need to do with your dog. You need to pick like I don't remember how many. So you need like ten of them or something like that to get like your novice title, and it, it advances from there. Uh, some organizations offer trick titles uh, are like AKC. The geez, I it's a long thing. D M W Y D. This is do more with your dog. But AKC, I think, is the big one. UKC maybe offers something. I imagine they might now. Um, but it's just looking into. And the great thing um, about this, like I said, is you can do it right from your home. And some of the tricks are really easy, like spin or have your dog, I don't even know, um, bark or jump up on a table. Not a dinner table, but a little table. Um, we're having fun with our dogs, not teaching them bad behaviors. Well, some of that is bad behavior. That's okay. Anywho, we're getting long here on the podcast, but we're going to push through. We got one more after this. So trick dog thing. Uh, training is low to high. It really depends on how much advanced into the tricks you want to get. There's some tricks that are super easy that you can get your titles with with no problem. There are some tricks when you get up to the higher levels that are awfully difficult. So it, it really depends. Uh, the physical training requirement is low to moderate. And just because you can do a lot of this stuff stationary, uh, and the physical requirement for humans, it's just training your dog. So you just sit there, chill with your dog, and teach them tricks. Um, the next one, the next one, and yeah, the next one is freestyle. So freestyle, which a lot of people, including myself, know as dancing with your dog, um, is basically it's obedience goofified, if that's a word. Is goofified a word? Maybe. It's basically obedience and tricks set to music. So you have like a choreographed routine where the dog's going through your legs, the dog's doing all these different things. Um, Organizations like the World Canine Freestyle Organization and the Canine Freestyle Federation and the Musical Dog Sports Association. That one I haven't heard of, but musical and dogs. It's just funny that they're connected, but I'll tell you what. I've watched people do freestyle. People have a absolute blast with this. I've watched dogs do freestyle. The dogs think it's the funnest thing in the world. And then you add music. I love music. I love a good beat. And if you get a good choreographed dog human thing that's going on out there, that that dancing with your dog stuff, oh man, it is impressive and it is fun to watch. Would I be able to do it? Uh, I think I have two left feet, so I think that would probably be a no for me. But it, it sounds fun, anyways. Um, Training is moderate to extreme. I mean, there's a lot to go in and choreograph everything. Physical requirements for the dog, moderate to extreme, depending on the tricks you want to do. And then the physical requirements for the human, moderate to extreme. Again, depending on what you want to do. You have to be able to dance a little bit. 
Uh, you have to be willing and okay with standing in front of people and dancing around with your dog. But it is definitely uh, definitely something that, that is is fun and seemingly fun to do. Uh, I'll give out some honorable mentions here because we are running long. Some honorable mentions for dog sports. Tracking, which is your dog follows a specific trail to a specific goal. Herding is moving around, whether it's ducks or sheep or whatever. Uh, Earth dog is basically, they go in the ground and they're looking for critters. And if I'm wrong on that, I apologize. Um, the hunt and field events. So this is this is like retrieves and this is going out and flushing. There's a lot of hunting tests. Uh, skijoring sounds exactly what it is, kind of, where you put skis on and you basically cross-country ski with your dog pulling you. Um, tray ball, uh, I'm trying to remember. Tray ball, I believe, is uh, uh, running with your dog through courses and stuff. I could be wrong. If I am, I apologize. And then Schutzen. And Schutzen is a protection sport where the dog has to go through obedience, tracking, and then protection work, which involves biting a sleeve. Now, one honorable mention, or a couple honorable mentions that uh, if I didn't recognize here, I probably would get shunned by a bunch of my friends, is two sports. One sport called French Ring, one sport called Mondio Ring. M-O-N-D-I-O-R-I-N-G. French Ring and Mondio Ring. Now, these sports are where you see a helper or decoy put a bite suit on, and the dogs have to perform certain things, and in the end, basically, bite the guy in the suit. Now, there is obedience and jumps that they have to go through before they're basically allowed to get to the protection part but both sports are are different but similar and both sports are equally fun as heck to perform in and play in which i do a ton of and uh, i definitely would recommend if your dog can do it get out there and do it so here's the thing when it comes to all these sports i talked about this is just ways for you to go out and play with your dog we can sit at home, we can do fetch with our dogs, we can do these different things, but it's just like having a home gym. If you have a home gym, the likelihood of you going down and using it gets less and less and less. So you can set a goal of like, hey, I'm going to go do this sport with my dog from home. I'm going to play with my dog, I'm going to exercise my dog. But as it goes along, it's almost so convenient that it's inconvenient. Like it's so convenient, it's right there for you, but you never use it. So what you can do with these sports, and a lot of these sports, there's so many good entry-level classes and courses that you can jump into that you can go once a week. Your dog can play around on equipment or in fields or whatever you, whatever sport you decide to do. And you're able to, to get out with your dog, play with your dog, learn something fun and new, and interact with people. I'm telling you, like all these sports I just went through, the people that are really involved in this sport – are so passionate about it. It's amazing. It is absolutely amazing. And there's a lot of people in all, in all these sports that are willing to help you and get you started and help to try to get you get you like advancing in it because growing your sport, the sport you love, growing your sport keeps it around and it keeps it good not only for you but for the future. So there's a lot of people in all these sports that are out there and willing. So if you do a quick Google of dog sports and you find one that sounds interesting that you would want to do, and realistically, you think your dog could do? Contact Google, search something, jump on Facebook pages um, and communities, and talk to people and and get into it. Have fun with your dog. I think that is something that people need to do more of. Dogs are more than pets. I've said this in previous episodes. Dogs are more than pets. They love activities. The nose work thing is absolutely amazing to me personally, but it's all good. So get out there, guys. Go play with your dogs, and hopefully when when I come back uh, talking about the next episode next week, you've already done a little research, and maybe you're going to be interested. And if you have found this podcast episode interesting and you are excited to start a new sport, jump on our Facebook page and announce it. Tell me what sport you're thinking about doing with your dog. Hey, maybe I know somebody in your area, and I can get you hooked up and help you out. So definitely definitely go out guys play with your dogs learn new sports meet new people have a good time that's it so guys like every week we'll see you in the next episode